Welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, MMA creative vice president, Democratic operative Mike Kopp, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host, Steve Gill. Welcome, gentlemen. As we tape this on Friday, still a lot of wrangling going on in Washington, D.C. We now know that Speaker Boehner has a bill with the support of the Tea Party folks now that they added the, the balanced budget amendment. Senator Reid has a bill. The president is urging people to continue calling their congressmen. Nothing's settled, but there's a bunch of movement going on. I guess the question is, can something come together from one of those pieces of legislation, both those pieces of legislation, to some kind of compromise? Well, well first of all, Reid has a bill that nobody's seen. The president doesn't have a bill. The Democrats that control the Senate for now two and a half years have not proposed a budget. The president gave a framework of a budget that went down to defeat in the Senate with zero votes. He couldn't even get any Democrats to vote from him. And yet these guys are pointing the finger at the Republicans saying they're not doing their jobs. I think, frankly, the Republicans have passed some bills. They did cut, cap, and balance. They passed the Ryan plan earlier. Now they've got the Boehner bill. It's time for the Democrats to either put up or shut up. Either put a plan on the table, let the American people look at it, or vote for what the Republicans are doing because they're the only ones acting like adults. And Senator Reid says he has that bill now that he thinks he can get the 60 votes to get it out. He does, and, and I think where we are at this point is we're finally at the point where the Republicans, it looks like the Republicans in the House, have finally coalesced behind something. That's what everyone's been waiting on. I mean, uh, Speaker Boehner has had trouble with his Tea Party trying to get them in line. Looks like they are in line. I think the big question is what happens between the Senate and the House. Um, no one can fault the president at this point for not wanting to try to negotiate with the various factions in Congress. It's easier to come to a compromise and a solution when you're dealing with one unified plan. And right now he has two plans. He's had more than that, but now we have two plans in the Congress. They've got to come together and bring one plan to the table in order for the White House to negotiate. We know these, the uh, House plan with the balanced budget amendment is not going to pass in the Senate. They've said that. The right. president said it will veto it. So I guess the question is, once that gets there, if the Reid plan passes, can they mold those two together and get something that the House will approve? Well, the problem with the Reid plan, and again, it is not written down. Right. We don't have plans to look at. He's hiding it in his pocket, the same way the president now says he has a secret plan. You know, the bottom line is the Republicans have passed plans. They passed the cap, cap and balance plan. Reid wouldn't even let it come up for a vote in the Senate because he was afraid that the Claire McCaskills, the Joe Manchins, the Nelsons would have voted for it and it would have passed. So you've had the Democrats blocking votes on plans that have passed in the House. Why not let them come up for a vote? vote? And that's really the same thing with the balanced budget amendment, with the cuts. Bring them up for a vote. Don't hide behind the 60 votes. Bring them up and see what happens. I think the real challenge left is the Republican leaders in the Senate, because so far Mitch McConnell, who's a minority Republican leader in the Senate, has said that he'd rather just punt the ball and let the president deal with it so the Republicans don't have to accept any blame for anything, which is totally irresponsible. I think if he gets in line behind the Reid plan and they can work to some kind of compromise, then we can see both houses come together. They've worked with, on more challenging circumstances in the past before. The deadline is looming, but I think they will come to a compromise. Agree or disagree with their philosophy, the Tea Party supporters, especially the freshman Tea Party representatives in the House, have not blinked. They have said we will not support anything that has any kind of loophole cuts, tax increases of any kind, and this has really caused fits for Speaker Boehner. In fact, he's used some salty language to say, get in line with this because I can't do my job unless you do. Is his leadership challenged? Well, I think, I think he's been challenged in part because they don't trust him. I mean, keep in mind, these are the same guys that struck a deal with Barack Obama and Harry Reid saying that they had made all these massive cuts a few months ago, and then it turned out there really weren't any cuts. He lost his credibility there. So when he's coming to a second time with these same freshmen saying, oh, trust me on this one, I've got big cuts, they're not believing him because he sacrificed his credibility. I think that that's his biggest problem with the freshmen right now. But keep in mind, they've won. And that's why I and others are saying, take the win and move on. Put the chips in your pocket, walk away from the table, come back and gamble another day because the battle right now is on do you cut this much mm -hmm. or this much? They're not talking about raising taxes. The Tea Party has won. Take the win and go home. And I think that's been the problem all along. When, when Steve talks about the Republicans having a plan and where's the Democrats' plan, the Republicans have been all over the map. Granted, the Tea Party has been consistent in their message, but the leadership has not been able to get them in line until now. So, again, who's to blame the White House for wanting to wait and see let all the factions fight it out and come to one unified plan. That's what we're seeing now. That's why we're starting to get to the table. One thing we've heard from both Democratic and Republican leaders is we will not let this country default. Boehner has said it, Reid has said it, the president has said it. So with that in mind, even though we're still having this war going on between now and the 2nd of August, does that lend a glimmer of hope anyway that they will abide by their word, something will get done before August 2nd? 
they will do something before August 2nd. I think the bigger problem is whatever they do is not going to be enough to avoid the catastrophe that is looming ahead because spending is still out of control in Washington. The cuts they're talking about, arguing about, are about $22 billion this year in a $3.7 trillion budget. You're talking less than one-tenth of one-tenth tenth percent. This is nothing in a $3.7 trillion budget. And the, the uh, standard and poor's, these folks are saying, I don't care which of these plans you adopt, it is not going to deal with the problem of spending that is out of control. And that's, we're just pushing that fight to another day. And Steve's right. I do agree with him on this. I mean, I th we are just sort of nipping around the edges. We've got to deal with a more long-term solution. But it took years to get us into this situation. It's going to take years to get us out of it. But again, you know, at the end of the day, I hope what they don't blink on is just pushing it down for a few months, pushing the decision down for a few months. I hope that they don't end up saying that we, we don't want to deal with this, let's just give the president some control for the next few months and then we'll deal with it then. This debate has really taken the air out of the room, it's been the only thing talked about while the GOP presidential primary continues to go on. It's gotten very vocal. We heard uh, from other folks within the Republican Party criticizing one another against the Tea Party folks, calling them hobbits, falling back, calling Senator McCain a troll. So it's gotten ugly in some regards, but it also has really uh, ignored much of the other debate that's going on outside of this issue. Well, you've got a lot of stories that are being buried. You've got that whole battle of McCain and the and the Tea Party. You've got the fights uh, going on in the Republican primary. You've got a Democrat with a sex scandal, David Wu, the guy that dresses in a tiger costume and apparently hits on 18-year-old girls. That completely gets ignored. Terrorist uh, plots at, in Fort, uh, Campbell Fort Hood with a Fort Campbell soldier. You, you've got the Libyan war still underway. Nobody's talking about that. This story has, has blocked everything else out. Uh, Fast and Furious, where we're given guns to Mexican drug cartel leaders who are killing Americans. All those stories have been buried. As soon as this story is gone, all those are back on the front pages. Well, I think I, I, I do think it's been tough for the Republican uh, candidates running for the presidential nomination because they've been off the front page big time. Well, and, and, and for good reason. I mean, which faction of the Republican Party should they get behind in this in this budget and, and debt debate? Because and they I haven't decided. The Republicans have been all over the map. It's it's prudent, frankly, on their part to wait and see which Republican stands up in, in all this. Typical and, and politics, you know, wait to see who wins and then say, I was with you all exactly. along. Exactly, <laughs> right. From right. your perspective, does that help or hurt any of them that they've all kind of held their hands back? I, you know, I think it doesn't help any of the, quote, so-called front runners. I think you've got Mitt Romney, who's a guy that's supposed to be the guy that can fix the, the, the business problems we're in, the financial problem we're in, and yet he's absolutely silent. And I think this is a guy that could have stepped up, shown leadership and, as, as a alternative to Barack Obama, and he's missed the opportunity. A couple of local issues. Let's talk a little bit about here in Metro. The uh, director of schools is talking about and behind a push to change schools in Tennessee or in Metro to a balanced calendar schedule where there would be shorter summer vacations. They get the same amount of days off, longer fall, longer spring breaks, but it keep kids in classes more often to keep their skill sets from deteriorating. People are going to be opposed to it. People like the way things are and don't, don't abide by change all the time. I guess the question is, can they sell this to someone that it does improve education? I think if, I think if parents are serious about their kids' education, and we know that in this competitive marketplace there's more demands on kids to learn more and to digest more, I think it's, I think it's simple. I mean, kids are losing the retention of the information that they, that they gain. They've got, we've got to be more competitive. We've got to, un unfortunately, force them to learn more. It's just going to be up to the parents to decide what's more important. About 20 seconds. I think the problem is we looked at the same issue in Williamson County. Mm -hmm. and it was rejected because when they looked at the studies of other people who have done it, it hasn't improved the quality of education or the academic success of the kids. Let's look at a track record and see if it works before we do it. Steve Gill, Mike Cop, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.